Hey everyone and welcome to Installing Data Protector version 10. Okay, let's do a little lesson overview. In order to start learning about Data Protector administration, you're going to have to start somewhere and that's going to be at the beginning. You're going to have to know how to install it and the options for installing and the components. All this stuff is really important, not just for installing, but also potentially for troubleshooting. Now a little bit about you. You're an IT administrator for a mid-sized firm. Awesome, congrats. You've just inherited the Data Protector Administration from a former administrator who has left your firm, and you're gonna to have to get up to speed as quickly as possible. Little walkthroughs. These are basically simulations to show you, in this case, how to install Data Protector. So you don't wanna to touch your production environment. You're gonna use a set of images that mimic production, perfect world. This way, when you make a mistake, nothing in production is affected. Right now, you're a window shop and you're going to be backing up file shares. Now, oh, Data Protector can back up a whole bunch more, but right now, you're just using it to back up file share servers. Hi, and welcome to the walkthrough for installing DP. Now, the thing is, you can actually set up your own image to do this installation. Just make sure you read the documentation to make sure you meet the minimum requirements. The good news is, is that you can use this course. There are trimies in the course that really mimic what's going on here. It's the next best thing to hands-on. Open up the setup file, the setup wizard, hit next. Read that license agreement and hopefully accept it and select next. Take a boo at this. You know, certain things have changed, what's supported and whatnot, just so you're aware of it. Always try to get the latest and greatest documentation, right? But click I understand and then select next. Now, what do you want to install? Again, you're trying to mimic your production environment. You want to install the whole thing. So just leave as is right now and select next. Now, this is some type of uh, telemetry agreement. Just accept it. You don't have to use it. Select next. Now here, if you want to, you can set up basically telemetry configuration. This allows HPE to gather information about your data protector environment. So this way, if you ever have to put in a ticket, HPE knows a little bit more about your environment. It's win-win. The good news is you don't have to do this now. You can do it later on. In this case, if you want to use it, throw in your company name and potentially internet proxy information in order to allow communication. Once done, select Next. Now, there are services that are going to get installed. What account do they, are we going to install it under? By default, it's using the account that's logged into this machine. That's the admin account. Throw in a password and select Next. Where are things going to get installed? By default, the root drive. Hey, this is just for testing, for banging things around right now. This is not production. This is good. If it was production, maybe I don't want to use my root drive. But leave as is and select next. What options, components do you want to install? Well, things have already been selected for you. The good news is you can always add things later on. Leave as is, select next. Once again, it's showing you the account that's being used. You don't have to do anything. Password's already there. And also some ports for services. By default, Data Protector is going to see if those ports are available. So this is good. Select Next. Now, firewall stuff. What happens is you don't have to add firewall information if your firewall on Windows is turned on. DP can do this for you. So just leave as is and select Next. Less work. I love that. Confirm the installation. Select Install. Watch it get installed. Grab a coffee. And then hit Next after the installation. A quick coffee. And then Finish. Now what you're going to do is you're going to open up your command prompt. And the reason why you want to do this is you want to actually see if the processes, the services, are fired up. You're going to run a command line, omni sv dash status, just to see if things are running. And it looks like everything is running. All these little processes on the left, status is active. This is good. Now you're going to fire up the GUI to access your cell manager. So launch data protector manager, cert pops up, 
hit OK. This way, encrypted communication between the GUI and the server. If you want to, just select Do Not Show This Wizard and then hit Close. And congrats, you're done. Data Protector Server is installed. You use the Omni Service command to actually check the processes after you install Data Protector. Well, the Omni Star, again, SV, right? This is a command line interface used by Data Protector. You can do many things with this. More than 60 commands and tons of switches and options. For instance, the Omni Service command that you used, you did a status using the status switch. You can use it to stop your Data Protector services and, of course, to start them. Very important. So you have a lot of flexibility with this command line tool. Now, also, some of these services, these processes, they're really important to know because, well, if they're not active, then certain things aren't going to work. The CRS, the cell request server, well, this does backups and restores. MMD is about media management. KMS is about encryption, keeping those encryption keys. HPDP-IDB, that's a big one. That's basically in regards to the database. There's an internal database, kind of the heart and soul of Data Protector. So that's really important that it's, that it's running. Then there's the same thing with the dash CP. This is basically, again, this connection pool, but it's really kind of making sure that no one's hogging the internal database. No processes are hogging it. Then there's the AS one, the application server. This is part of the web services components. This is for logging in, and as you're going to see, for global options and for scheduling. Omni INAT is actually the client. This is for backups and restores. I hope you enjoyed the installation lesson, and if you'd like to learn more about HPE Data Protector 10, consider enrolling in the Data Protector Essentials class. You can also check out our full learning catalog by clicking the link in the description. Thanks.